Um, first of all, I think we'd love to hear more about why your organization is pursuing a net zero goal. What are the benefits and why is this important? Yeah, I, I mean, that's the big why question, right? And I think um, we at DSM, we've always built our future under the big assumptions that we cannot be successful as a company in a world that fails. So uh, we need to contribute to a better world and therefore we apply our capability, our science um, towards creating a brighter world. And if you have that capability, uh, it comes with responsibility. Um, and we as DSM will want to take that responsibility and therefore you need to apply a net zero goal to future-proof your organization. in mind, what positive action is your company taking already that is driving the change needed to make net zero a reality? Yeah, I think we have a, a, a huge list of actions we've taken um, because at the end of the day, it's not only the ambition to go to net zero, but you will be measured against actions you take. And uh, we have a, a bit of a holistic view on what the responsibilities of companies. We think that it first starts with your own footprint. And we call that the improved part. Uh, we need to improve on our own mission performance, um, improve on renewable energy of our own operations, and therefore create the base load, but also the, the entitlement to say something for the rest. Mm -hmm. And the second element is we call that enable. So if you improved yourself, you go to enable for the whole value chain. Um, we help customers, we help suppliers, to contribute to that net zero. So we work with suppliers where we have a, a clear demand on creating a net zero path, but we also work with customers with innovation to help them to become net zero. And I think that is an important understanding for the enable part. So improve yourself, enable for the value chain with suppliers and customers. And the last bit, equally important, is that in today's world, um, private companies have a role to play in advocating for climate change, advocating for creating a brighter life. What do you think is the most significant hurdle when it comes to companies achieving net zero? How have you been able to overcome this hurdle? I think, first of all, the key hurdle is that this is not a monodimensional solution. This is a value chain approach. It needs different parties to align. It's a bit like rowing uh, with eight people in a rowing boat, right? You really can only win the race if all work together. If there's one in the boat who is not synchronizing, that boat will not win the race. It all needs to be synchronized. And that's a little bit the hurdle of achieving the net zero because it needs all elements to come in place. That's one. And this is customers. These are governments. This is the industry. But it's mm -hmm. also the consumer. And I think that last bit I want to call out. I want to call out to consumers that they also need to be a change driver of becoming net zero. So another challenge question. What do you know now that you wish you'd known before, before you started strategizing and planning for a net zero future? Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, I think I think I would I would have appreciated that from the beginning, this is a bit a value chain approach. I think mm -hmm. DSM in the past we we thought, hey, if, if we would work on our own business, the rest will follow, right? A bit what I said on improve your own standards, mm -hmm. uh, then enabling the value chain, and then you, it's easy to advocate. I think that was a mistake. Uh, I think we focused initially a lot on our own uh, footprint because we basically felt that if you don't show the evidence that you take your own footprint standard seriously, um, 
you're not allowed into the game to discuss and advocate and take leadership. But if everybody does that, nobody is taking that advocate leadership discussion. I think we could have jumped in earlier with uh, a few other companies because everybody was still first improving their, their, their own footprint before they started the discussion. And, and I think we've lost maybe three to five years by doing so, not only DSM, but the whole industry. Uh, and I think three to five years in the current trajectory is a long period because um, being net zero um, requires actions today. More or less, what is the main learning you would share with a company at the beginning of their net zero journey? So mm. I think what, we, what, we, what we've learned today is that you need to have a, a very secure roadmap short-term mm -hmm. actions to really move forward, to really make that plan to 2050. And what we've seen is that lots of people only start thinking the moment that 2050 is near. And I think that is something mm -hmm. which, we, which we're which advocating for, that we have a clear, actionable roadmap, not only in 2050, but already mm -hmm. for 2021, 2022, 2025, 2030. It's a, it's a big elephant which mm -hmm. is ahead of us. And you can only... Uh, uh, solve that by chopping it in pieces, small pieces, step for step. And I think that's a learning. And I think that is what we've done at DSM. I mean, we have moved renewable energy uh, mm -hmm. within four years from 3% of all our used energy, 3% was renewable in 2018. Mm -hmm. Today, in 2021, more than 65% is renewable. Would you like to talk a little bit more about how you engage with your supply chain and cross-sector more broadly to drive this through the value chains, to drive net zero transition across the economy and achieve the systemic change that we need? I, I think it's a, it's, it's a, it's a key, key question. Um, and I think in all fairness, we have learned for one of our customers. And in the materials business, we supply Apple on on. on, ah. on on, on the nice phones, right? And they basically said, we, we from Apple, we wanna only buy components which are made with 100% renewable energy. And dear DSM, you as a supplier, we really value for innovation and sustainability. Uh, we would like to make an agreement with you that within the next two years, all the products which you supply to Apple will be based mm -hmm. on renewable energy as a first step. And uh, it was a bit like a, a wake-up call for us because we were doing the transitioning. Uh, and I just told you, we we're in 2018, about 3% of our energy source was, was renewable energy, only three. So some of the sites, we needed to have a, a, a roadmap, a short-term roadmap, mm -hmm. in order to continue to deliver uh, Apple as a customer. Talking about international policy, um, what are the key outcomes that DSM really hoping for, looking for from COP26? Let's decide what we do in the next five years ahead of us, not in 10 years, because that, that direction decides where we would end. And that mm -hmm. is COP26. And it's a crucial moment for governments, but also for private companies. And I think we as DSM, uh, with many other companies, we've signed the CEO Climate Alliance letter where we ask the governments to make bold commitments and that the private sector sometimes is being pushed into innovation and find solutions. But now is the moment to do that. I think where we have the capability, there comes responsibility. And the governments need to take responsibility. The private companies need to take responsibility. Consumers need to take responsibility. And we need to act now because otherwise it's too late, we can't bend the curve. What is your view on the Fit for 55 package? What will the priorities be for your company? 
Yeah, so Fit for 55 for me in the framework of delivering the transition to net zero economy is supportive, is helpful. Mm -hmm. It is governments, it's industries, it's customers, it's consumers. And I think any direction which moves into an area where we get a price on waste or a price on emission, for me, in our philosophy, STSM is support. Mm. Uh, we need to, we can't reconfigure the whole economic system because that will take too long. In the time frame where we need to bend the curve, where we need to come to net zero um, within uh, the next 30 years, we need to use the system as we have. And if we do that, we need to put a price on waste. We need to, need to put a price on CO2.